special announcement now besides what we got going on here with john mcafee on this wednesday may 27th at 11 a.m for the tokyo crypto show this is going to be a monumental breakthrough moment for this show it is probably the highest caliber guest we have ever gotten um but i've also got to talk about something a little bit a little serious and I got to say some of you guys may or may not approve of this but we are actually inducting our first and only woman into the hot dude army and I know some of you guys are gonna be like what the fuck are you doing this is supposed to be a masculinity movement how are women going to be part of this? But I assure you, this woman is my soulmate. I have found the one, and I love her with every single ounce of my existence. I'd like to introduce you to my little baby. This is Happy the Maltese. Look at this thing. She is three months old, and she was born on February 10th. She is the first and only woman to ever join the Hot Dude Army. She is 100% the most loyal thing I've ever had in my entire life, and this is my soulmate. I love her so much. The name Happy was my idea. It was not an eight, not not anybody else's idea, and I love her so much. So if you guys want to follow Happy on Instagram, she is a very, very big supporter of the hot dude life. Go to the Happy Maltese on Instagram. She has no photos yet because she doesn't. You know, I'm waiting for her to get a little bit older, and uh, she will 
she'll be daddy's gonna buy her a cell phone but you know she's she's just gotta she's gotta earn her little stripes right now so welcome to the hot dirt army do you want to say anything yeah george bruno is a fucking dork oh you are totally you are totally daddy's girl do you want to say anything else Anthony Johnson is a fucking dork, too. Oh, my God. You are... What a sweet angel. This is daddy's girl for sure. You want to say something else? Hypergamy doesn't care, motherfucker. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, you want... What, what's that? You want to say one more thing? MGTOW is for quitters. Oh, you're... I'm so proud of you. Daddy is so, so proud of his baby. You are such a good little girl, aren't you? So, guys, welcome to Interview with the Man, episode 260. On a serious note, uh, don't forget, Body Language Mastery is coming up on June 25th for the quarter two enrollment. Guys, if you want nine weeks of intensive coaching for the rest of the year on how to get your money, how to get your muscles, how to get your game to the next level, if you are ready to pimp your puppy... If you are ready to take everything in your life to the next level, you're just going to go to www. Hold on, Daddy's got to type. Daddy's got to type. All right, just stay there for a second. I'll bring you back. I promise. www.modernlifedating.com forward slash body language. Okay? And let's take a look at what we have here on the screen. I'll pull it up for you folks that are first time around. Okay? Once you're at this website, you're just going to scroll down and click on this link right here. Type your best email address in here and only know it's going to be only available for five days. And then the entire month of July is dedicated to webinars. So we're going to have the webinars for Body Language Mastery, which is going to be three weeks. And then the last week of June, July, no matter what, if you've got into Body Language Mastery before... We are having the Hot Dude Alliance. That's when all previous members that have enrolled into Body Language Mastery will join under one banner, and we're going to meet each other, and we're going to create real friendships in real life because this ain't a game. This is real life. This is real men doing real things for real success, for real results. If you want to be part of this team, you come on down. You go to modernlifedating.com forward slash body language. Sign up. It's 100% for free. You just put your email list on that list. Or you put your email address on the waiting list, and then you will be notified on Thursday, June 25th, after the show, when everything goes live. So, uh, so last week, we had a wonderful week of shows, right? Um, man, last week was a serious banger. And what we're going to talk about today is maximizing your sex appeal by knowing your body type, okay? Now, despite what all the crazy social justice warriors say, all body types are the same, and we're beautiful at any weight, all, all this basically uh, feel-good lies, that's what they are. And we're going to dispel them today because, quite honestly, um, the quickest thing you can do to... Give yourself an advantage in the dating world is 1000% get a better body. Okay. Now, what we're doing is we are focusing today on the type of body that you will have in regards to there's one of three types that you are like a base model of, and then there's subtypes of this body type as well. So, we're going to talk about that. And on Rule Zero this past weekend on Richard Cooper's channel, we moved it to 9 a.m. Eastern. So if you did not catch it, go over to Entrepreneurs and Cars. Check out his channel. Awesome channel. Awesome guy. We did over 1,000 live viewers during that show. It was absolutely fantastic. And then Dude Party right after it on my show was absolutely fire. We had an amazing uh, panel. John from Bulldog Mindset, Mr. Lacario, Rolo Tomasi, Troy Francis, uh, Myron Gaines, Donovan Sharp, it was like serious. It was like an all-star lineup. Like every, every race, every age, every color from all corners of the manosphere came on, and it was just absolutely fantastic. So, with what we have going on now, um, everything is growing at a monumental rate, and we were talking about what people in the black pill loser community say 
LMS is everything. Looks, money, status, right? And these guys are uneducated. They haven't slept with a lot of women. They don't know the truth. They don't have the data from the real world. They read a bunch of science studies. They think they know something. And the only thing they know is a defeatist mindset and despair, right? So in my opinion, as I mentioned on Rule Zero, if you want to maximize your life to have sex with as many women as possible, what you need to do is optimize your looks, which is make money. Actually, I'll tell you, obviously you have to do make money, make muscles, learn game. And then also you want to uh, work on the status aspect as well. We're going to talk about all that today, okay? Today's going to be a, a phenomenal episode. And yes, Mad Dog, that's what we're talking about, okay? Uh, real quick, do you guys want me to open the phone lines? I want to hear from you. I want to hear your fitness struggles. We're going to talk about everything today. It's going to be an in-depth episode. But I can tell you this without a shadow of a doubt. Press 1 in the chat if you want me to open the phone lines and call in. If you're willing to call in, give me a 1. I'll, I'll open if we get 10 ones. And honestly speaking, last year... I slipped up with my fitness, right? I made a, a terrible mistake with my uh, my fitness goals. I got carried away with life. The channel blew up. I had a bunch of fun, and honestly speaking, I let my my let my um my fitness slip a little bit, right? I was eating pizzas, traveling the world with Miss MLD, drinking, partying, banging broads, having the whole fucking phenomenal time, right? And so. I slipped up because this is what happens when you have a lot of game. Let me tell you the downside of having a lot of game, right? And game is understanding female psychology in order to enact with them in a way that both of you can mutually exchange a consensual sexual experience. And with that being said, sometimes when you have so much game, you can slip up in other areas. I mean, how many of you guys have heard of a guy that's a complete bum, but he gets a bunch of women. He makes maybe five, you know, he probably makes like $15,000 a year, but women are buying him cars, women are taking care of him, everything just because he makes them feel a certain way. Do you guys know somebody like that? Let me know. Let me see the ones in the chat. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh, we need two more ones if we want the phone lines to open. Um, how many of you guys know a dude that's a little bit a little husky, right? Let's say floating around 24, 25% body fat, but he still gets some broads, right? Let's be honest. How many of you guys know a guy that is not really the most status-oriented person, but he still gets a lot of girls? That's a guy who has game. Now, my order that I was saying is important for you to get the most amount of sexual experiences and optimize your sex life. Number one, in my opinion, is game. You need game. And a lot of these dorks in the black pill community, the MGTOW community, I really feel sorry for them, honestly. All right, baby, we gotta put you down here. Don't don't rip daddy's gold chain. Um, I'm gonna open up the phone lines here, but a lot of these guys, they don't seem, they, they just think game this is what they think game is. They think game is reading RSD or the mystery method and reciting some lines. And then now, like a, they, they just think so logically. They're so out of touch with the emotional side of their brain that they don't understand that just because you do something doesn't mean automatically girls are going to show up. They think very logically like, okay, I have muscles. Now where are the girls? Oh, okay, I have money. Now, where are the girls? Oh, okay, I'm six foot plus. Okay, now, where are the girls, right? Okay, come here. Babe, are you in the shower? This little girl's causing trouble, but it's okay. I'm a benevolent leader, and I forgive her of all her trespasses as she forgives me of mine. Let's fire up these film lines here. But yeah, without a shadow of a doubt, number one thing you have to learn is game, okay? And what is game? Again, game is understanding female psychology. That's basically what game is. Number two is status, okay? If you have status, man, it's if you have game plus status, it's over. It doesn't matter if you're fat. It doesn't matter if you have one leg. It doesn't matter if you have no arms. If you have status, dude, it is over. 
But the peril of having status without game are stories like Johnny Depp. Who remembers what happened with Johnny Depp and Amber Heard, right? How about Mel Gibson? Remember when Mel Gibson went crazy on the phone line with that Indian woman or what, uh, whatever, whatever? I think she was like Indian or Spanish or whatever, and she like recorded his phone calls and released it to the press when he went on that crazy rant. How about Donald Sterling and that girl that he was dating that he was like, you can go date all, bang all these dudes, but just don't be taking pictures with them, right? These are guys who have status, but they don't have game. And Donald Sterling had to sell the Clippers, right? Mel Gibson got blacklisted for Hollywood for a while. Johnny Depp lost $20 million in a divorce. There are perils to having tons of status and not having game. I personally like the story when I met Blake Griffin, right? Blake Griffin, NBA superstar. When I used to work at the 180 Great Goose Lounge in Orlando, Florida, which was on the roof of the Amway Arena where the Orlando Magic play, right? You know, uh, Blake Griffin was in the VIP, and he was there, and he was simping hard to this girl that was a rock-solid 7 max. Blake Griffin is in the VIP with tons of bottles of Grey Goose, pouring it for the girl and being like, and and qualifying to the girl, saying, "I'm I'm a gentleman, just so you know." That is the detriment of having status and no game. And guess what Blake Griffin's doing now? Paying a hundred thousand dollars a month in child support for the next eighteen years. Think about that. Let's open up the phone lines. Call in with your questions, comments, concerns. If you want to know about how to maximize your sex appeal by knowing your body type, 657-383-1318. No call is too small. Welcome to Blog Talk Radio. Here we go. Please enter your host pin. When finished, press the pound key. To start your show now, press 1 to hear him. Okay. Your show will go live in five seconds. Four, three, two, one. There we go. All right. The Hot Dude Hotline is open. Talk Call on in. 657-383-1318. Come on down. Come on down. Me and a Happy the Maltese, we're going to be taking your questions if you want to call on in. But we're going to talk about these body types, right? Because going back to the, the ranking, right? So number one is ultimately it's a 1,000% game, okay? Number two, irrefutably status, right? I think the guy who embodies somebody who uses game plus status in the best way I've ever seen in my entire life is Gene Simmons, right? Uh, from Kiss, fantastic guy, gorilla pimp. Hero, God amongst men. And that guy really understands his stuff. Now, number three is the one that I believe that we're talking about today, and that's looks, okay? For all these black pill dorks, these MGTOW dorks, these guys who have zero sexual experience, zero understanding of women, right? They are... Here, baby, take this. Take her. Thank you. All right, we can get down and dirty now. So, you know... <sighs> We we talk about these uh, these factuals debates that they always have, like oh you know status and status and oh my god, like it, it it's all about your jawline, man. They did a study, right? Because I actually have my degree in psychology. I'm not a fucking Google scholar, and they they did a study, and the study says that without a shadow of a doubt, they they tested two groups of guys, right? Guys who had uh, a measurably large amount of body mass regards to muscle and a group of guys that had no muscle whatsoever. And the guys who had a large amount of muscle, these guys are the ones that had more sex with women. And it's kind of common sense to know that. But again, that's the, that's the thing these black pill guys, they don't understand. And that's why they're losers. And that's why they gravitate towards this defeatist loser mindset, right? So, the the last one that is seriously a lot of people just extremely misconstrue is money. You do not need money to get a ton of women. What money does, it makes your life easier to optimize your womanizing. Instead of you having to clean your house two hours before a girl, a girl comes over, you call your cleaner and you're like, Hey, you know, Maria, whatever the hell your name is, get your ass over here. 
I got this house. You need to clean it up. Three hours. Let's make this bad boy happen. Instead of doing your meal prep yourself, boom, meal service. Hey, you know, fucking meal service prepper people. I need food. Bring it down here. I'll deliver everything, you know? You get the, the delivery laundry, all that stuff sorted out as well if your cleaning lady's not doing your laundry. You just optimize your life for um, for womanizing, right? Instead of picking her up in a fucking, you know, Toyota, you pick her up in a Cadillac. Or you pick her up, pick her, I hate Mercedes, so I'm not going to use Mercedes. You pick her up in a, in a nice BMW 5 Series, right? Those little things, they're like icing on the cake. But the reality is, like, okay, let's be honest. How many of you guys have had a beater piece of shit of a car and slept with a girl. I used to have this nasty 1994 teal green Mercury Tracer that was stick shift. The, the air conditioning didn't work and the windows didn't go down. I used to sweat in that thing and suffer. This is why I'm such a gangster now because I had to go fucking through, through the fucking the grinder to make this stuff happen, to make this success happen in my life. And that's why none of these black pill dorks can say anything, right? And when I had this car, I can't tell you how many girls I had sex with in the backseat of that car. I'm just saying, there was Cynthia, the really hot Brazilian girl, right? She spelled her name Cynthia, with like the Brazilian way, S-Y-N-T-I-A. There was Vanessa, the hot-ass Mexican-American girl. Man, there were so many girls. There was Crystal. There was Jackie. I mean, I can't, like, the car was disgusting. And I had tons and tons and tons of sexual experiences right so uh griffin says do you mean the body types ectomorph mesomorph endomorph yes sir that's what we're talking about today we already got the phone lines blowing up jesus christ okay let's go to 647 647 what's up hey you can hear me hey what's up right. is this ricky can you it? it is indeed hey yeah so quick little question here yeah. um i've been going on a strict cut ever since the quarantine happened. I used to be at 18% body fat. Right now I'm floating at around 13.5-ish, roughly. Wonderful. I'm going to continue this thing here until I get to something like 9%, which would be pretty damn lean. Mm -hmm. And for the first time, I'll, I'll be able to see what my lower abs actually look like. So the question that I have for you is, when it comes time to doing the opposite and actually putting on muscle, mm -hmm. how do you recommend I go about doing this? I've already spoken with Myra, and his advice is to first Float it, uh, reverse the cut to a maintenance for a little while so you know what your maintenance calories should be. Yeah. And then bump it up a little bit from there so you can be on a caloric surplus. But not too much so you just you know, don't fuck up the cut. What Myron, do you recommend? Myron Gaines is 100% correct. Because what are your, what's your daily calorie consumption at right now? Right now I'm sitting at roughly 1,600 calories consumed with about 170 grams of protein. Okay. And how tall are you? I'm, I rechecked my measurements. I'm actually 5'11". 5'11". Okay. So 5'11", yeah. and how much do you weigh? I weigh right now at 158. Wow, you're really lean. Good. Good for you. So I would double check with either um, Myron Gaines or Josh from eLift Program, right? And what I would okay. do is... Good stand there, right? Yep. And what I would do is from right. 1,600, I would bump it up slightly to 1,800. But make sure you're lifting weights. Don't just bump your calories up if you're not going to be lifting weights yep. To, yep. to be building – excuse me, to be building the muscles. You understand? There's, it's not a good idea. Got yep. You got to be – you have to be so careful, especially in northern America because I know you're in Canada. Like you have to be careful when it yep. comes to uh, adding calories back to your diet because, man, yep. the food is so calorie dense and like it's so easy to get fat, especially because you told me you used to be fat before. So people who are oh, yeah. who, who were fat previously, you never lose your fat cells. They just extremely dehydrate. They're still there and they can rehydrate mm -hmm. with fat quickly. So – I would be extremely careful. I would do it about, yeah, like I said, 1,800, do it for like two weeks, track your progress, look in the mirror, ask yourself, are you liking the way you're looking? And if that doesn't work, I would consult a professional in regards to like Myron Gaines or Josh and then move forward from there. But 
you want to be like I would never go from like sixteen hundred to like straight up twenty five hundred a day calories. I would never do that. I would incrementally increase and measure what's okay. going yeah. on as you do that. Cool. Okay. And let's assume the worst case scenario happens. So we're still stuck with a stupid quarantine for another God knows how long. Mm -hmm. um, so assuming I'm only going to be stuck with doing um, body weight stuff. Um, so I'm assuming that I just basically take whatever I'm doing right now and just sort of, you know, try to multiply whatever I'm doing by like 1.5 or something here. Right. Can, Cause most of not, us, I'm um, assuming can you more work buy, required, right? Can you not buy some dumbbells? Uh, I could, but, uh, there's lots of storage, right? Where am I going to store them? Uh, I mean, dumbbells, they're here. not they are not going to take up a lot of space, man. I have two I have two dumbbells that I use. I live in Tokyo. I know my place is smaller than yours. <laughs> yep. Mm. Okay. You feel me? And last. Yep. No, I hear you. Yep. I'll try to get them. Right, awesome. And the last question that I have is when it comes to getting a really, really, really don't ask what do you recommend i'm assuming just do some lunges and some squats it depends on your body type and we're actually going to talk about that today in today's episode okay okay so pay okay. attention i actually have a fantastic ass i've been told so by multiple <laughs> women and it all depends on two factors of your body type which we're going to talk about today as well as the maintenance of these body types because the typical thing is like, oh, you know, just do this exercise and you'll get this result. And it's not true. Humans are different bodies. Mm -hmm. uh, we all have different types of bodies and our, all of our bodies respond differently to different types of exercises. So we got to pay attention to uh, what's happening with our body because there is no uh, universal like solution to everybody. Uh, and their body type. Does that make sense? Yep. Crystal clear. Thanks. That's all I had. Awesome, Ricky. Look forward to talking to you again, buddy. Have a wonderful day. Thanks for calling in. Yep. You too, man. Yep. All right. I see you. That's our man, Ricky, calling in from Canada, the most polite country in the entire world. Um. Okay. Yeah, the phone lines are open, guys. You want to call in 657 383 one three one eight. Wonderful call. Uh, going back to that. So yes, the one X factor you can control to make your dating aspects of your life in increase at the at the be the best speed is without a shadow of a doubt changing your body. Because here's the deal: game takes time, and game takes effort, and it takes a little bit of money sometimes. You know, you can't force your way to learn game by just doing the repetitions of dating because some guys just don't pick it up as fast as they should okay you can go on 50 dates some guys are going to learn at a faster rate on those 50 dates than guys uh than other guys right but if you go to the gym 50 times and you do what you have to do then without a shadow of a doubt uh you're going to get those tangible results here at modern life dating interview with the man what do we always say make money Make muscles and learn game. Be focusing on those three aspects of your life. And as a man, you will be extremely, extremely happy. There is no ands, ifs, or buts about it. Because let's be honest. If you're a man watching this show, you want to have sex. And I am an advocate of sex. I'm a big fan of sex. I, I really am. So looking at what we have here, the gym is the quickest way to give you kind of that that equalizer that a lot of you guys are seeking, right? And it's not like, oh, I have six-pack abs, therefore the girls will come. You have to look sexually aesthetic as well. And your face really is not a big deal, to be honest with you. Your face is not that big of a deal. A lot of these guys say face is everything. A lot of these guys, they're just, uh, they, there's a lot of people that just, quite honestly, they're confident idiots. They don't know what the fuck they're talking about. Okay, so going back to that, those are the top four that I believe are the most important, right? Number one is game. Game can get you vagina if you know what you're doing, no matter what, okay? The other three, they're just bonus amplifier factors if you don't have game, okay? But if you have a game, life is on easy mode. 
Number two, status, right? Look at DJ Khaled. Fat, disgusting mess. Get tons of girls, right? Why? Everybody knows who DJ Khaled is. Number three, looks, okay? At the end of the day, sexy body. Man, these girls go animalistic when you have a sexy body. And especially if you know how to be good in bed. If you know how to give proper sex, that's another thing that a lot of these black pill dorks, because all they do is have sex with prostitutes. They don't know what it's like to have genuine desire. They don't know any of those things. And that's why they suck, and that's why they get caught in this negative feedback loop, right? You, If you give a, a woman a very, very good sexual experience, she will fucking stalk you. And it's not just about pounding her pussy and just like, oh, yeah, I pound that pussy for an hour, bro. No, it's not about that. It's getting up here, and that ties into game. And then number four is money. Money just helps optimize your lifestyle, really. Money just makes life easier for you, okay? So there are three types of body types that we're going to talk about today. And Jesus, phone lines are lit up. Uh, before we get into that, let's answer these phone lines real quick. Looks like we've got an international caller calling in. Uh, international caller, what's up? Hey, Jonathan, how are you doing? This is Muhammad. Muhammad, my brother, how are you? I'm good. Well, I'm good. How have you been? Yeah. I'm good, buddy. How are you? You doing good? I see you're happy. I'm happy. Yeah, all good. Yeah, all good. Just uh, preparing to fight um, at the end of the year. So mm -hmm. pretty, pretty tired. Mm -hmm. Good. <laughs> it's going hard. Good. Um, just, just I, I like what you're saying. Um, it's absolutely on point. And I will, I'll, I'll try to make it quick. Everything that you said is absolutely true because even when I was homeless and I used to go to the gym just as an escape from my mind, the girls used to look at me and just love the viciousness and aggression that I show. Mm. So, of course, at the time I was learning game from you quite extensively and that worked a lot in my favor. So even when I was homeless, I was still getting women. Women were booking like expensive hotels like Intercom, Four Seasons, all that stuff. Yeah, so but, what you're saying is absolutely true, and it's but you're not you're not white, Muhammad. You're, you're not honey. white. You're not white. You're you, you know Sorry? you're not white. Your head is bald. I thought you you never could you could never date a woman like Miss Argentina, right? <laughs> I, I don't think I don't think anybody would want to date a Muhammad Osama until they see him. So <laughs> what's up? <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> oh man. I'm kicking off at a disadvantage, but I've used my name as game every single time. Yeah. I, I tell her, like, listen, you don't have to worry. The only time I'm going to blow you up is going to blow up your back in bed. <laughs> so, you know, the only, I swear, I do that all the time in clubs here. I'm like, or, or lounges or whatever. I'm like, listen, the only time I'm going to go, Allah, I'm going to blow you up. I'm going to blow up your uterus in bed. Like, so what's up? Like, don't worry about my name. <laughs> I love it. Go ahead, continue. Yeah, Go ahead. You know? I just wanted to ask you, do we know anybody in our community that's a fighter as well? I mean, I know we've got the boxing um, boxing uh, fighter who came on on the webinars. Um, Ed I'm trying to get in touch with John Fitch as well again. Yeah. Yeah, because I'm, I'm preparing to fight. To have my first MMA fight at the end of the year, so let's uh, let's Re fucking wait and see. Reach out but, to John. Like, all this black girl guys, I love how. He's... Okay, sorry. I was gonna say, reach out to John Fitch on Instagram. He's really active, and he will probably get back to you, especially if you tell him you're friends with me. Awesome, we'll do, we'll do. I've, I've been speaking with him a lot because he shared something during your awesome webinars about how he fixed his neck with these supplements and vitamins. Mm -hmm. And honestly, it works. So I, I think I'll just get in touch with him again. But I appreciate it. Yeah. Well, listen, thank you so much for calling in, buddy. We'll well, talk yeah. with you. Me to put in the fucking work. All right. Yeah. Take care, Thanks. buddy. Bye-bye. It looks like we got a, 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 an uneducated hater in the chat. It looks like James Dell says, because it's naturally easier when you are a foreigner in Asia. But let's ask James Dell. James Dell... Have you ever been to Asia? Looks like the chat says no. So what you're telling me is that you've never been to Asia, but you assume, based off of some jerk-off reports that you read on the internet, that you know what it's like here, 
just because you read something on the internet. Is that what you're saying? This is the train of logic we're going down? If you knew anything about Japanese culture, you would know that foreigners on the socio-hierarchy are at the absolute fucking bottom. But you don't know shit, James, because you are shit, okay? And your mindset is shit, and you will never amount to shit. The fact that you need to come on this stream and run your stupid mouth about shit you don't know about just shows me why you're part of this dumb black pill community. So enjoy your life of mediocrity and loserdom. And we're going to take the next caller, 830. Hey, dog, can you hear me? Hey, hey, who's this? It's Brandon. Brandon. Oh, what's up? I got a lot of Brandons in the community. So, yeah, Brandon L., yeah? Uh, yeah, yeah, Brandon L. What up? Uh, dude, so my question is, so, you know, because you, you know that I'm in the pandemic pickup, I was watching uh, the fitness section and talking about tracking calories and all that. Mm -hmm. And, I'm like, I've always had, like, naturally, I've always been a very small guy. Like, I got called a, a lot of names in regards to just being very skinny. And so, it's very, I mean, you, you, and you saw the photo that I sent you, but it's been very hard to tack on muscle and actually keep it. Yeah. And um, I heard you talking about um, in taking a certain amount of protein. Yes. And then also a number of calories. Yes. Uh, uh, do, both, do both of those need to be in conjunction with each other? Like the amount of uh, protein you intake also needs to be with the amount of calories that you take or that it or they're like two separate things that you do. Um, so it depends on your body type. Time, like you can take a certain amount of... Right. So it, depend okay. it depends on your body type, and we're going to cover that right now. So sit tight, listen up. We got you sorted. Okay, Brandon? Okay, cool. All right, buddy. Thank you so much for calling in. That's our man, Brandon, calling in from Dallas, Austin. Uh, fantastic. Fantastic. So... Uh, Let's go and jump right into it, okay? So what we got here, we got a couple of body types, right? And for you guys, just so you know, if you're interested in fitness and stuff like that, I can't, I came up with a very elementary level course. Click on that link in the chat right there. It's 100% for free. ModernLifeDating.com forward slash teachable. ModernLifeDating.teachable.com. Anyways, the link's in the chat. I'll put it in the description of the video as well. You can see my free fitness course when I have a couple of lectures and also um, some cooking modules with the calories and the protein intake all on the screen calculated for you. You just need to follow these simple recipes. If you're a man and you do not know how to cook, man, oh man, you are screwing up. You got to get on your kitchen grind, learn how to cook. Learn how to do it with this free course, Body Fitness Max, and it's available by clicking on that link in the chat right there. Okay, and I'm putting it uh, in the description box right now. Free fitness and cooking course right there. Bingo. All right. So let's go to these body types. Now, one of my favorite websites in the world for you guys to go and learn about uh, fitness and all these wonderful things in regards to the human body, I advise every man to become at least a... Um, uh, a, a, you know, how can I say, a, a, a relative expert in understanding calorie intake, uh, ending, maximizing your physical appearance, and understanding your macronutrients. Macronutrients are carbs, proteins, and fats. Don't be like those losers in the black pill community who say, I have a metabolic issue that doesn't allow me to make muscle and some people just can't make muscle and I and I ask him like so did you uh did you track your calories did you uh track your protein well I don't need to do that because I have a degree in nutrition and um because my mom told me I'm a special angel I don't need to do these things again rationalizing the fact that they don't do the work in order to get the results that they desire. A great website with a lot of wonderful resources is bodybuilding.com. Now, 
there's I know there's gonna be a lot of like you know purists out there that are like oh my god bodybuilding.com they're so like they're not like fucking super chad like me I get it but if you go to bodybuilding.com they have an article here posted on April 8th that says what is your body type take our test right so the big the main three body types here and I know there's some science to say like these body types don't exist okay guys don't get all fucking religious on me this is just a framework for people who may not know this stuff, okay? The three body types are ectomorph, mesomorph, and endomorph. And we have a, a, a photograph of each of the types here, okay? Obviously, the men are on the left and the women are on the right. If you're one of the 75 other uh, genders, you're going to have to do some extra research. But if you're, if you're a cisgendered person... That means you're a man or a woman watching this content. Boy, oh boy, am I about to educate you. The first one is the ectomorph, okay? So the ectomorph here is, it says the ectomorph tends to be thin and struggles to gain weight as either f body fat or muscle. They can eat piles of food and stay looking the same even when gaining muscular weight is their biggest goal. People who battle to gain muscle are often known as hard gainers. Ectomorphs have a lean build, long limbs, and small muscle bellies. Even an ectomorph manages to put on weight, they still may look skinnier than they are, particularly in the calves and the forearms. Being an ectomorph doesn't mean you're doomed to be weak, though. You can still get remarkably strong, and you can be every bit as fit and healthy as someone who looks larger and more muscular. But if you want to gain weight, you better be prepared to eat like you've never eaten before. Honestly, I personally believe that if you want the longevity of having a wonderful life and a wonderful muscular body, if you're an ectomorph, I personally believe that you hit the jackpot. I am not an ectomorph. I wish I was an ectomorph. And with these ectomorphs, okay, what it is, it's like this, right? How many of you guys, you know a friend that no matter what, they always have tight, six-pack abs like they're just always have a flat it doesn't need to be like rigid but they always have a flat stomach they're just always skinny they eat pizzas they drink beer and no matter what they do not gain weight i absolutely envy the shit out of these people these people are the source of my fucking bane they're the bane of my existence man if, if are you do you understand if i was an ectomorph Oh my god. First of all, I'd eat pizza every day. Okay? Second of all, I would just probably have like quadruple my body count, right? But I don't. And the problem with these ectomorphs is this. They have a lot of trouble gaining weight, right? However, it's it's honestly if you're out there and you're an ectomorph and you're listening to what I have uh put out here today for us, you are blessed. Um, I believe Richard Cooper is a, a, like an ectomorph because you look at back of his his photos in the 19. I think he posted he posted a photo from like 1977. He's sitting there with his arms crossed. He has his back up against like some cool muscle car, and Richard is shredded. Richard has always I believe Richard's always had those six pack abs, and he is an ectomorph. He might be um, a, a, a mesomorph, but I'm. I would I would put my money on an ectomorph. Um, one person that I know without a shadow of a doubt is an ectomorph is my man in the chat, Mac the Day Gamer. He's actually right on time, buddy. Welcome, Mac. Thank you so much for joining tonight, or this tonight for us in Tokyo. Morning for the folks in the United States and Northern America, Canada, etc. Um, Mac is Mac and I would we went to this uh, luxury resort in Okinawa and we were chilling. And they would serve us a five or six course breakfast, right? A lot of you guys saw it. It was absolutely fantastic. I could literally see and feel myself getting fat on the trip. And me and Mac were eating the exact same amount of food. But Mac is extremely, I, I say thin, but it's like, it's not in a bad way. He, he's thin in a good way. Actually, you know what I mean? Let me, I can pull up his Instagram and show you guys exact, so you can see exactly live here on the show what an, um, 
what a uh, ectomorph looks like. Okay, Mac is a big fan of calisthenic training. He does a lot. He does all his workouts like old school prison style. Does all his workouts outside. Doesn't go to a gym. Doesn't lift weights. Everything is extremely um, done in regards to just body weights. Okay, you can follow Mac. Uh, one of the first associates here uh, at the uh, Modern Life Dating Headquarters, Mac the Day Gamer on Instagram. Go ahead and follow him. You can see all his uh, his uh, photography as well. Here's him at the beach. So you can take a look at him right there. See, I took this video because I'm a great friend. But you can see, he's just uh, he's like a thin guy. He's not he's not thin in like uh, in a bad way, but just he is naturally skinny. So in order for him, he's a handsome devil too, look at this guy. You know, in order for him to get the body that he wants, and for you ectomorphs that want the body that you want, you need to put in a lot of work lifting weights by doing weight training, and then also you have to eat. You have to make sure your protein content is through the roof you have to make sure you're eating because it's a lot it's a very 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 big struggle for the ectomorphs not only to gain muscle but also to keep muscle because if mac were to stop exercising as an ectomorph he will lose his muscles now let's talk about this in regards to dating right as an ectomorph you only need to go to the gym and exercise, honestly, for about, I would say, six months. Six months to, to build the frame that you want. You can get super shredded, and you can put on a considerable amount of muscle mass that women will find sexy. Now, I'm going to use a very simple analogy for all the men watching because the audience is majority men. You're better off as a man looking like Spider-Man than you are looking like Thor. OK, you're better off looking like a Backstreet Boy or a, a member of a boy band or K-pop band, whatever that kind of muscular lean look rather than looking like a Dave Palumbo or, you know, a, just like a, a like a like a, a big burly man, because sometimes girls will say it's too much. Now, there's niche women out there for sure who have certain dis the certain particular tastes that they enjoy. And um, when when it comes to seduction that's all you need honestly if i were to say something uh what's his name tom what's spider-man's name tom holland there it is uh okay so take a look at this honestly tom holland is like that perfect boy toy look that uh women will enjoy and feel like you know he's basically he's sexy enough he's cool enough and like she can show him off on social media so take a look here if you just, like i said right here so this this is like perfect looking at this like right here this right here for girls this is this is like ultra chad status this right here is perfect you don't need to be super super jack like here's a perfect example this guy on the right is like an ectomorph who doesn't exercise as much right but if you just put in some concentrated effort and you look like this this right here is beyond enough to have an above average sex life. This is perfect. Girls love it. Girl, girls are not like us too. Girls are not like like when we see um, when we see a guy like Tom Holland, we think like, ah, oh, you know, he's kind of a puny guy, right? But in girl world, that is beyond enough. Okay, that is beyond enough. Okay. And then Coach Jim and Beard Alpha says, looks like a girl. I understand. I understand. But I guarantee you that this body type is going to get you way more pussy than looking like a big burly man. And that's what today's episode is about. It's optimizing your body type to get tons and tons of sex appeal. This right here is very easy to attain. It's very maintainable. And honestly... If you're an ectomorph, you are so fucking blessed. You have a genetic gift from God. It is your duty as a member of 
The so, dude you have accepted the truth. Look at that. The hater, James Doe, just subscribed. Thanks so much for subscribing, James Doe. We will unfuck your beta ass. Um, as an ectomorph, it is your duty to go out there and be the hottest dude you can be. Keep that in mind. We got a phone caller on the air. 714. Let's bring him on. 714, you got the floor. What's up? Oh, Jonathan. It's over, Jonathan. It's over. It's over. I'm, I'm five foot seven, and, and I'm an ectomorph, and I can't get any pussy. <laughs> How's it going? Is this Eric? Yes, it's Eric. How's it going? <laughs> How you been, brother? Good, good. How are you? Good. Listen, man, all the, all, all the guys that are that are ectomorphs or you can even be categorized under the ectomorph slash endomorph. You could go be in between. But if you put in the time and effort for the next, at least, say, I've been lifting roughly powerlifting for, or not, I wouldn't call it powerlifting, I just re recreational lifting in general for like the next seven years. If you dedicate your life to focusing on the squat, bench press, um, or an overhead press and deadlifts, you know, you're, you're going to pack up the fucking thighs and you can eat like a motherfucker and burn off all those calories and still pack up some fucking muscle. And girl, you're still, you're, and that's going to, that you're going to be way above average than the, you know, while I'm in fucking California over here. So the obese, the obese, um, the obesity out here is fucking skyrocketing. So, you know, you're going to fucking stand out. There's just no ifs, buts, and there's no fucking excuses, you know? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I but I was listening to that Black Peel shit, the Black Peel um, interview you did the other day um, when you were breaking down the, what's that guy's name, Black, Black Pill Dictionary. Mm -hmm. that, that's just a bunch of poison. You guys should not be listening to that shit. I was listening to it. You know, that shit even fucking got me depressed just listening to that, you know? Yeah. It is. It's it's, it's a loser circle jerk, and, you know, I've issued a gag. It's, it's, I, just, I've issued a, it's, a, just, a, the, it's just a defeatist mentality to give up, you know? It's yeah. like, all they talk about is money, fat, it looks me. Uh, okay, yeah. But to some extent, it makes it easier, like you were saying earlier, you know? Having that income of cash flow coming into you, streams of income. Mm -hmm. But... If you don't have your game on point and you don't have a muse master, you don't know how to pick up on signals, key, signal cues that women are giving you. Um, if you don't know how to like, you have the like, confidence, talk to a woman. They're just gonna, it's just gonna be like a, the pussy's just gonna dry up like a fucking desert, honestly. Yeah, and that's why <laughs> I've put out a gag order. Uh, we're no longer gonna entertain any of that loser scream and. You know, quite honestly, yeah. without us, they'll just eat each other alive and self-destruct because they're losers, and that's what losers do. And us over here mm -hmm. at the fucking heart, at the fucking hot dude army, we're a bunch of winners. I'm winning. My guys that I'm coaching are winning. There's nothing inauthentic about what I'm doing, and we are going to the top. And if you guys don't want to come with us, I mean, that's your choice. God bless you. May the force be with you. But all I got to say is without a shadow of a doubt, I know that I'm doing the Lord work, the Lord's work, as everybody tells me. I'm doing the hot dude in the sky. I'm doing him a fucking justice. And we're just going to let losers do what losers do, and that's fucking lose. And I'm going to keep on doing what winners yeah. do, and I'm going to fucking keep on winning. And that's all we got to say. Exactly. You know, and it's, it's very easy, you know. Just focus on money, muscles, and game, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, the other day, I'm like, shit, I don't have money to uh, to hire a professional photographer, but I have my fucking iPhone 6. I got a fucking tripod, got a nice fucking, um, nice fade on my hair, haircut. Mm -hmm. Went to like this, um, went to a location, set up the tripod, took a fucking picture, posted it on a fucking photo filler, and guess what? That shit has 8.5 fucking uh, on, on attractive looks. Good. Boom, I posted it on, on Tinder. With some other photos, and it's bro, it's never been fucking easier. It's like fucking Uber, Uber, Uber pussy. Eats. <laughs> Good. Good stuff. Well, listen, thank you for calling in, Eric. I'm gonna take the next caller. I appreciate you, buddy. All right, sounds good. Have a good day, bro. You too. Take care. It's our buddy Eric coming out, California. Seven five four. 
You got the floor. What's up? What's good, man? It's Kofi. Hey, um, how are you? I'm doing all right, man. This is this, this is crazy, man. The thing that blows my mind is like it takes just as much effort to be stuck at the bottom as it does to get to the top. Like if people just switch their minds, they'd be great. Like yeah. the bottom's crowded, the top isn't. Yep. That's all I gotta say for today. But this shit just it blows my fucking mind, man. Bro, be listen, better. It, it, it blows your mind because you're a fucking winner, and you have to realize. That if you're a winner and you're always surrounded about w winners, losing is such a foreign concept to you. You're just like, what? Why are these people even doing it? Like, it doesn't even make sense to sit around and circle jerk about how life is terrible. It makes zero logical sense. You should be putting all effort in your life towards maximizing your happiness to get what you want in this short amount of time that you have on this planet before you take that big black fucking sleep. And that's my philosophy. And let me talk tell you that something. Fucking talk. Bro, let me tell you something. I've been a rich man and I've been a poor man. And straight up, I choose rich every time. Life is awesome when you have money. It's fucking fantastic going into luxurious dressing rooms. It's wonderful eating at expensive restaurants. The quality of women that you can get if you leverage game plus money is fan fucking tastic. Everything's better when you fucking, as a man, work hard. And put yourself first and have a financial plan that is set up to lift you up. There's nothing wrong with that at all. There's zero ethical problems with that. You deserve bars. Thank you so much for calling in, my man. That's my man Kofi doing the work at the ripe age of 23. Still 23, I think, yeah? 23. I think he turns 24 this year. Wonder wonderful kid. Super, super gangster guy, too. I love him. Uh, let's do 480. 480, what's up? Hello, hello, 480. Hello. Yeah, can you hear me? Yep. Hello. Yeah. Hi, John. Hi. Hey. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Uh, okay. Yeah, hi, John. Uh, yeah, first of all, I would like to... Uh, uh, congratulate you for uh, destroying those insel guys on their forum. Thank you. That was that was amazing. Like, Th thank you. Yeah, those guys are losers, uh, and I am a winner, and I, that's what I do: defeat the losers. Yeah, exactly. So uh, they were in their uh, feminist frame of mindset, which yes. is like name calling and uh, putting the guys that are winning in life. Uh, down so that they can feel good about themselves. Right. Yeah. So I wanted to ask, like, uh, so I'm a skinny guy. Uh, I'm 30 years old. Uh, I'm in the United States and I have been living here for a year. So um, I am like one, 120 pounds mm -hmm. and uh, I'm 30 and I'm 5'8. So, yeah, I just want to like put, put on muscle mm -hmm. and uh, become attractive. As I said, All I right. think I'm an ectomorph. Okay, so are you so, a member of a gym? Uh, yeah, I, I go to the university gym, but it's closed for like two months now. I went from December to uh, February. Mm -hmm. or March I think mm -hmm. uh, I went there for three months and I could see like amazing results mm -hmm. but then I stopped going because of the coronavirus mm -hmm. and then I think I'm back to where I was mm -hmm. and uh, yeah so I don't know now what to do like I'm still waiting for the gyms to open up and the other thing is that so eating and all it costs money and I'm just uh, a student right now looking for a job here right so i wanted to ask if i can do this right now or should i wait till i get a job and i can afford things and then start again or i can do something right now you always time. start right now always start right now okay thank you because let me ask you something you're looking for a job right yeah i am 
Can you look and find a new body I to am, hop into? Uh, sorry, what? Can you look for a new body and transfer your consciousness Hello? into a new body? Yes or no? Look for a new body? Yeah, yeah, yeah sure. Yeah, I understand what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah. So like, take always, totally always person, take care of your body. Get a new body. Always take care of your body. Without a shadow of a doubt, you always need to take care of your body. Uh, thank you. Yeah, I'll do that. Okay. Yeah. Check out my fitness course. So, yeah. it, it's free. Download Body Fitness Max. The link's in the chat and the link's in the description box. And I can help you out with all of your um, fitness needs by watching that course. And I'm adding some updates to it soon. <laughs> I promise. I'll check that. I'll check that. And another thing I wanted to ask, I know we're short on time, like how to become more like an extrovert. I think I'm a shy, introvert type of a guy. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, yeah, even I'm a foreigner here, so my English is not as good as the Americans. Yeah. So I think I'm kind of shy. And girls don't like that. Like, if you want to get, like, more women in your life, you, you don't have to, uh, you shouldn't be shy, right? Okay. Well, Hello. you have to practice being extroverted. That's a big thing. All right. You have to practice having conversations with everybody. Right? You have to practice talking to women that you find are not attractive and women that you find are attractive. Make small conversation with the guy at the gas station or the, the, the person working at the restaurant. Maybe you're talking to the Chipotle person. I personally, I like to sweet talk to people at Chipotle so I get double meat for free. That's how my little game. I feel like, can this person hook me up with some big scoops of meat without me having to pay for it just by me being a charming bastard okay it's little things like that if you can be yeah. if you can be a socially charming motherfucker life is so much easier and it's a learnable skill okay that is true but uh, the thing is that yeah definitely you should be charming but I just had a uh, a, a question like doubt related to that isn't charming uh, does it translate to being like too nice no sort of, like, charming nice. when you're here's the real definition of charming when you're charming people enjoy having a conversation with you you make the person feel uplifted and happy and they enjoy the conversation that's what a charming person is and if you make people feel good, you make people feel nice about themselves, the world will be served to you on a silver platter. Okay. Understood. Yeah. All righty. Yeah, I'll practice. Uh, yeah. Now listen, said. are you on the waiting and list? Yeah, for, the are you on the waiting list for body language mastery, my friend? The PH course? Uh, the body language course. Um, no, actually, I'm a student right now. I don't have any money. Mm -hmm. So uh, I, I was thinking of joining that, but uh, I'll first get a job. In that. What do you think? Right? I think you should get on That's to the waiting list and join if you're serious about getting your life sorted out. I'm half Indian, okay? I could tell you're Indian or from Bangladesh. Where, where are you from? I'm from India. Right. From Mumbai. So, I, I let me tell mm -hmm. you something. I got a lot of Indian relatives, okay? They're stingy as fuck. They always oh, want a dis cool, yeah. they always want a discount and they never want to invest money in anything. They just want to hold <laughs> hold hold I, money. I, I totally know what you're talking about. That's how Indians are. Yes. Like, I, I'm not trying to put anyone down, but that's the mindset in India. Like you you just want everything for free and you don't I they know. Don't want to pay for anything. And, I know. A uh, lot of my family and members are like that. belief in America. I know. So here's the thing. You cannot exactly. be afraid to give money to become the person you want to be. Sitting there trying to figure it all out. This is a scarcity mindset. All right? If you want to get the, the life that you yeah. want, the sex life, the happiness, the fitness, all that stuff, 
don't be afraid to invest in yourself. It's the similar thing to waiting to work out with your body. You're the number one person you're always going to have until you die. So invest in that person and love that person the most, okay? Okay, I'll do that. Body uh, language. Uh, I was definitely thinking of uh, joining that. How much is this for? This quarter for is six ninety seven, and it gets you nine weeks of coaching. Nine weeks of coaching. Okay. Uh huh. Until the end of the year. Uh, is it you like personally? Are you also? Oh. You there? Hello. All right, caller. Look, looks like yeah, your, yeah, your connection's here. a little bad. So just get on the waiting list. Hit me up with an email so we can follow up. I'm going to continue on with this show. But uh, don't procrastinate on taking care of yourself. Do what you got to do. Do it now. Get your body sorted out now. Take care, buddy. All right, I'm going to go with the next caller, 410. All right, 410. Hey, John. It's Brett. Can you hear me? Hey, yeah. What's up? Can you hear me? I can hear you. So... My question is, uh, how long do you stick with a workout program before you change up and move on to something else? Uh, I mean, that's a pretty that's a pretty complicated question, but basically, plateaus are going to happen no matter what. And then when you notice a, a plateau, either in weight loss or weight gain, whatever you're doing, that's when you're typically you're going to have to modify something you're doing in the gym or something you're doing in the kitchen. Does that make sense? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Mine mine's more like like other marketers or whatever saying, "No, what you're doing like that guy's trying to screw you up or like steal your money or whatever. You got to do it my way." kind of thing. So there's like always something else or some sort of you know bullshit and it's kind of it's kind of hard to like figure out what works you know what i mean mm -hmm. right like i could be on something great but mm -hmm. someone else is like you know backstabbing the guy because he wants his you know clients or whatever wait so what are you talking about? Backstabbing clients? What does this have to do with working out? Okay, like, my personal thing is, like, I'm, uh, I got, uh, the X3 bar. It's like a band workout system because I got bad joints from the Marine Corps. Okay. How and are you? I'm also in this community of Drew, the hit list. And he's like, oh, well, that guy, he's, He's trying to screw you. He's just his his stuff's you know too expensive or whatever. Do my way. So there's like infighting between different like uh, workout gurus, basically. Okay, time out. Saying. How old are you? So I'm like thirty two. How tall are you? Five nine. How much do you weigh? Uh, like one hundred and seventy pounds. You don't know how much you weigh? You don't have a scale? Yeah, like 170 pounds. So do you have a scale, yes or no? No, I don't have a scale. <laughs> okay, so you don't know how much you weigh. Get a scale, I... first of all, okay? Get a scale and a calendar. Okay. Every morning, you take a shit, you take a piss, you don't drink any water, you get on the scale, you look down at your weight, and then you write it down on the day that the calendar is in front of you, okay? So tomorrow is the 26th. You okay. wake up, take a shit, take a piss, don't consume anything, no lock, no food, no liquids, nothing. Take off all your clothes or in your underwear and get on the scale and then document your weight. And then you modify what you're doing in the gym based upon these results with the weight and the mirror, okay? Also your measurements. That being said, what is your target goal? Um, long term maintenance. I just want to, you know, I'm I don't have like belly fat or whatever. I'm probably probably uh, that first one you're talking about. The ectomorph, ectomorph or whatever. Like, it's hard for me to put on muscle, but I don't get fat. Mm-hmm. Okay. 
That's good. So then what you need to be doing is be lifting weights in a gym. These band workouts, nothing compares to putting on muscle than going to the gym and lifting weights. There is nothing better than that, okay? You give me a guy who does 100 fucking push-ups a day, and you give me a guy that does three sets of 15 bench press every single day. The guy who does the bench press is going to get bigger muscles, he's going to be stronger, and he's going to look better than the guy who's doing push-ups every day, period. Any thoughts or do you have any knowledge on like just the uh, like joints? You know, like so say I go, so I got bad joints, I got bad shoulders, bad hips. So if I'm going and lifting and I, you know, tear my shoulder, mm -hmm. then I'm fucked on all levels. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, Did yeah, you... I know that's a fear point, but is it a logical fear point or is it like baloney? Just be careful, um, but I think it is a little bit more of a, uh, a baloney point than it is. Obviously, consult, consult your doctor, blah, 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 whatever. But in regards to taking care of yourself, like, you have to fucking make sure that you're not injuring yourself at the gym, but don't be afraid to go to the gym because you might get an injury. Everybody gets injured in the gym eventually. It's just a part of life, you know? Yeah. All right. Appreciate it, man. You're welcome. What's your name? Brett. All right, Brett. Thank you so much for calling in, like buddy. Like Brett Favre? Like yeah. Brett Favre. That's, Car that's, right, that's uh, Charlie from Cultivate Crypto. That's his favorite quarterback, Brett Favre. Um, Charlie's a big fan of Brett Favre, especially when he was at the Green Bay Packers. Um, all right, so let's go back to the uh, today's topic. We're talking about these body types. I'm going to go deep into this. Uh, the second body type, which we're going to talk about here, is the, the mesomorph, okay? So, the mesomorph is the one right in the middle, pretty healthy as well. It's a, it's a combination of the ectomorph and the endomorph. So, the description here says the mesomorph has a middle-of-the-road build that takes the best of both worlds. They tend to have wide shoulders, a narrow waist relatively thin joints and round muscle bellies this is the problem point to be honest this is the this is the problem point for muscle uh, mesomorphs okay in short if you're a mesomorph you have a natural tendency to be fit and relatively muscular does this mean you can do nothing eat everything and get away with it forever definitely not and you're not necessarily healthier than the other two types either but you may be able to bounce back from being out of shape more easy than the other two body types. Gaining muscle and burning fat with comparative ease. I think the best example of a mesomorph is none other than former welterweight champion, Mr. George St. Pierre. If you take a look at George St. Pierre here, this is him, right? The mesomorph, you can see... His stomach is not as ripped and defined. And this is like Tom Holland's not even trying that hard. He's not even like on a serious diet. Here he's kind of, this is, you know, look how, this, you can see it's just far, it's a slender, it's cut. He's way more ripped. George St. Pierre here, you can see, he has what, like, what they call like the muscle belly, right? He has a thick midsection. Right here you can see it as well. Very thick midsection. There are little patches of fat here that look like muscle along his uh, lower obliques and uh, lower uh, lats and lower obliques, right? You can see here, this is when he was not in like tip top shape, but still very, very mesomorph, right? Um, in my opinion, I think that uh, George St. Pierre is a fucking fantastic. Uh, Role model for physical fitness. I think the best he ever looked is... Uh, honestly, I think the best he ever looked is when he fought Carlos Condit for uh, the unification of the interim belt after Carlos Condit defeated uh, Nick Diaz. That was, like, fantastic. Uh, he looked... In, he was real beefy, and uh, he was... 
Uh, very, very muscular, looking real good. Like this is this is him right here. I think that was the best looking George St. Pierre. Number two is when he was at 185 and he was fighting um, Michael Bisping. I think he looked really good there as well. But yeah, this is him here. If you're a mesomorph, you have a little bit more leniency than the other types in regards to packing on muscle. Packing on muscle is not as hard as a mesomorph. However, your body does have a tendency to stack on fat. That is the that's fat is our enemy here at the Hot Dude Army, okay? You do not want a lot of fat on your body. Now, some mesomorphs in this community, I would say, are Rick Torres, uh, Angelo, um, what's his face? Uh, Roberto Flores. Uh, I believe Josh Costanza is also a mesomorph. And, um, you know, oh yeah, perfect. Joe Rogan is also a mesomorph. That's a good example. But with these guys... You have to be a little bit more active in the gym, and you have to be careful with your carbohydrate consumption. I know you can say whatever the fuck you want to say, all carbs, blah, 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 not equal, whatever. Shut the fuck up, okay? The point I'm trying to make here is eating a lot of carbs causes a lot of water retention that can look like fat. And honestly, if you're eating a diet high in protein versus eating a diet high in carbs, um, you're, the, the amount of uh, the appearance that you're going to look like is going to be night and day. OK, you're going to look absolutely atrocious if you have a high carb diet, unless you're doing something crazy like John from Bulldog Mindset, like the fucking running 15 miles a day. Not a big fan of running, let alone 15, 20, 50, whatever these crazy super athlete runs this man does. I don't even know why he does it, but hey, God bless him. He does them and he's a fucking gangster for doing them. But yeah, the mesomorph, you got to be careful with your calories a little bit more. The ectomorph is, is blessed, man. Fucking goddamn ectomorphs. Mac, you son of a bitch. I'm so jealous of you. Mac woofed down an entire pizza at fucking in Okinawa. Didn't gain a single red cent of a fucking pound of fat or anything, man. Super lucky. Doesn't have to work out to, to stay jacked. Just... Just fantastic uh, body build. Um, like I said, Josh from uh, Eat Lift Program, one of our moderators in the chat, fucking fantastic guy. You know, another guy who's, according to these black pill losers, Josh is five foot seven, self-professed. He has receding hairline, chubby cheeks. I have seen these girls that Josh is having sex with. These girls are stunning, man. These girls are super, super stunning. All right? And, um... You know, there is a lot to unpack here in regards to being a mesomorph. I advise you to do your homework, but know that if you're a guy who's a mesomorph and you dedicate yourself to a regiment in the gym, you are going to look Chad as fuck. You are going to look super, super, super Chad. Another guy who is a mesomorph, and Josh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe Dan Bilzerian is also a mesomorph. Uh, Dan Bilzerian, in my opinion, has a very nice build. Now, he's very regimented with what he eats, what he drinks, his sleep. He goes and makes sure he goes into the sun, right? Dan Bilzerian does not naturally look like this, but with hard work, dedication, and taking care of his physique, this is what you look like as a muscle morph. Again, look at... Look at his look at his um look at his stomach, right? That's like what you call the muscle belly, right? Looks great. Honestly, this guy is 40 years old. 40 years old. Looks absolutely fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. Again, you know, he has a like you can see. You see? He doesn't have, again, he doesn't have like that that Tom Holland slender build to him, but he has like the muscle belly. But still, you can look great. Look at him. This is a fucking great looking man. That's what 
you can aspire to be if you are watching now as a mesomorph. Okay? Again, look at that. Great fit, great action shot. Very lean. Doing some high car, high intensive kickboxing here at AKA Thailand. Um just fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. Again, that's what you can look like as a peak mesomorph. The only the, the only X factor that is stopping you is your work ethic and your discipline. Period. Just stop eating. I know it's harder. It sounds harder than it is, but you just gotta stop eating and stay consistent in the gym, and you can look like this. Okay. Let's go to our next and final body type. And then we're going to talk about the sub body types within these, which are two. Okay. Now, this one, this is for the big boys. Okay. We got the endomorph. Okay. Now, if you're an endomorph, you really need to pay attention. I'm just going to give it to you straight. Don't sit around. Don't feel sorry for yourself, but as an endomorph, you have been dealt the short end of the biological stick with regards to keeping as lean as possible. However, there are ways to still look sexy as an endomorph. Okay. Let's read the description of the endomorph. It says the endomorph tends to gain weight and keep it on. Their build is a little wider than an ectomorph or a mesomorph with a thick rib cage wide hips, and shorter limbs. They may have more muscle than either of those body types, but they often struggle to gain it without significant amounts of accompanying body fat. If you ever feel like you gain five pounds simply by walking by a donut shop, you may be an endomorph. This definitely doesn't mean as an endomorph can't be healthy. They can be very every bit strong, healthy, and capable as the other two guys. But and may actually have some strength advantages due to the additional muscle mass. But if and when they decide to lean out, it'll take hard work. Okay. Now, with the endomorph, people who are endomorphs, I think a good example. The okay, let me let me just let me just give you some man talk right here. All right. If you're an endomorph, know this: you probably have colossal bones, and you can knock a motherfucker out. Just know, I look at me. My wrist is relatively thin. I'm, I'm like between mesomorph and endomorph because my body retains fat as well. Um, like an example of a guy who still looks good. I, I think Donovan Sharp is between mesomorph and endomorph. Donovan is in the house. Donovan, you can be assured to correct me if you feel like it. But there are people who are endomorphs that look good. An example, um, if you take a look at the world of pro wrestling, okay, Take a look at Mr. Brock Lesnar, okay? This guy is an endomorph. Terrifying man. Absolutely terrifying man. Former UFC heavyweight champion, um, wrestling, college wrestling athlete. I mean, the guy is just a monster of a man. Now... Obviously, he's taking some steroids and testosterone, and he's on an extreme diet. It's not to say that it's impossible, but you can do this if you are an endomorph. And as an endomorph, you don't necessarily... Look, if you look like this, there are niches of women that are really going to be attracted to you. However, if you had to choose between this looking like this guy... And looking like, uh, what's his name? Let's do Tom Holland shirtless again. Let's pull that back up. If I had to give you, if we did a survey between this ectomorph, okay, and this endomorph, let's see, let's choose one when he looks in real chat as fuck. Looking real great there, right? Or here, even that one, that's better, right? Looking like lean. If you had to pull women between this and this, I, I would say the majority of women will take this. Now, it's not saying that you need to cry a river and talk about your life is over and you're never going to make anything of yourself. It's not true. But as an endomorph, just know you're going to have to go for a different look, okay? I mean, and again, with the man points 
set aside. The thing is, if you look like this, man, you can know in your heart of hearts, if shit goes down, you can put a motherfucker's head through a brick wall. Okay? And it is possible. You're just not going to be super, super uh, shredded without some effort. 2015 was my year. Kofi with the 499 donation. Every year is my fucking year. Now Alpha Bro Max status says Matt Frazier, CrossFit champion, endomorph. Let's take a look at Matt Frazier. I don't know who that is. Matt Frazier. Oh, Frazier, CrossFit. Perfect. Yeah, this is a great example. You see, this is what you're going to look like. You're going to look more of like a, a, like of a burly man. This is like a smaller framed endomorph. But this guy, I can definitely tell this guy monitors what he eats. And CrossFit is just insane. You just, you burn a copious amounts of um, uh, calories doing CrossFit workouts. CrossFit workouts are insane. Okay? But yeah. You know, this, this guy is uh, a friggin' monster of a man. And again... You have to find your niche. Another guy who I Josh, uh, let me know if you th if you think I'm wrong, but I believe uh, I believe Henry Cavill is uh, let's see Henry Cavill Superman uh, oil scene. I believe that uh, Henry Cavill again. Not super, super, super ripped, but like just that burly man look. This is what you can do as a man to maximize your uh, your your fucking sex appeal, right? I mean, again, thick, thick stomach, not super, super shredded, and um, yeah, that's I, I don't know. Say he's like he's like more of like a meso mix, to be honest. But another guy here's a, here's a bad example of a guy who is um. A guy who doesn't take care of himself as well as he should. Uh, but Mark Hunt, former UFC interim heavyweight champion. I believe he was interim heavyweight champion. But yeah, this guy right here. If you know anything about Mark Hunt, Mark Hunt puts people to sleep. This man if this man punched Stefan Struve in the jaw and broke his lower jawbone clean in half. Okay, this guy is an endomorph. Again, you can see around the midsection kind of has excess of fat. Around the pectorals has excess of fat, his laterals and his arms. By no means am I discrediting what this man has accomplished in his career. But this is an example of a guy, because I don't want Mark Hunt coming after me. This motherfucker will kill me. <laughs> I'm, I'm gangster, but I would need a gun to take this guy down. <laughs> but this is what an endomorph looks like, and he is a bad motherfucker. If you watch any of his old K1 fights and stuff, this dude was a killer. Let me see what, let me see what it looks like in his prime. Kind of look, uh, or maybe I put... Yeah, see, this is him when he look, kind of took care of himself. I, Mark, Mark's just always kind of been a like a like a, a burly boy. That's him there, a little less fat. He's on the he's on the with the blonde hair. Okay, but yeah, that's the endomorph. So as an endomorph, unfortunately, you just have to be extremely careful with your diet. It it just it is what it is. I would avoid binges. I would be focusing more on a high protein diet uh yep Don Dan donovan sharp perfect example as well uh former ufc heavyweight champion as well and w one hell of a fucking fighter daniel cormier from from louisiana just like josh uh this is a man who has an endomorph body again daniel cormier if you know anything about mma and fighting this man is not somebody you fuck around with um you could tell, take a look at his body there. You know, he's a little bit of a doughboy, but under that is a lot of muscle. And when he cut down to fight John Jones, he looked great. You know, John Jones is an example of a mesomorph. John Jones, the most dominant light heavyweight champion in UFC history, and just all around wild man. I fucking love John Jones. Um, that's a mesomorph, and this is an endomorph, right? More deposits of fat. 
With the endomorph, you typically see the chest, the shoulders, and the traps. They they pop out real soon, right? The, the back as well. They have trouble areas with the arms and the midsection. But again, you have to have your niche as a man. And honestly, if this is what you look like, it is what it is. You just got to play your cards right. It's going to take a little bit more effort, but it can be done. Without a shadow of a doubt. Yeah, see, I think Stipe Miocic is also a great example of a... This guy is a mesomorph. He's an example of a mesomorph guy. Um, great guy here on the left-hand side. And uh, Daniel Cormier whooped his ass the first time they fought, but they rematched, and he, he came back and won. And, and props to him. I look forward to the rubber match. So those are the three body types that as, as, a, as a womanizing dude, you need to know where you fall on. Again, you know what? Here, I'll just go ahead and do it again. Let's do a quick let's do a quick recap, okay? And you can find this article at bodybuilding.com uh, forward slash fun forward slash Becker number three dot htm. You have the ectomorph, in my opinion, the most blessed and gifted of all the body types. I think Troy Francis is an ectomorph. Um, narrow hips and clavicles, small joints, rank wrist, ankles, thin build, stringy. Uh, stringy muscle bellies, long limbs. The mesomorph, which has wide clavicles. Clavicles are your shoulder bones, for you guys that don't know. Uh, narrow waist, thinner joints, long and round muscle bellies. So I'm like, right, I think I'm between endo and meso more than I am ecto. Fuck, I wish I was an ecto. Um, and then endomorph, blocky, thick rib cage, wide, thicker joints. Like, yeah, this, I think Donovan falls under end endomorph because I've seen Donovan's fucking wrist and they are terrifying. Uh, fucking wide, thicker joints, thick wrist, um, hips as wide or as wider than clavicles, shorter limbs. That's, that's, so the shorter limb stuff, I kind of disagree with. And, and that's going to lead me to the second part of today's episode. So again, don't forget, guys, if you want to call, the phone lines are open, 657-383-1318. Uh, the second thing we're going to talk about here is the there's two subtypes on, under this as well, okay? And I know today's episode is a little long, but I guarantee you that if you're a guy in the gym and you're serious about looking good, this episode is for you, okay? Now, there's two types of bodies. There's the body with the long limbs and the short torso. And there's the body type with the short limbs and the long torso. So I am actually the long limbs and short torso. I actually, so I'm five foot ten, and I measured my wingspan yesterday. My wingspan is seventy five point three inches, which is all that equates to six foot two. So I have extremely long arms. Unfortunately for me, with the long arms, I have a lot of bone that I need to fill up with muscle. So I have the illusion of having super small arms on the camera here. Everybody who meets me in real life, they say, wow, you're a lot bigger than I thought in real life. But that's why people call me spaghetti arms. And if you're a guy out there with longer arms, just know that when you have these long arms, it's just going to take time to fill out longer arms longer legs i have really long legs i have chicken legs like my quads are pretty relatively nice size but my um my legs are skinny so some people like that with that with that similar frame anderson silva former uh middleweight champion in the ufc and john jones the typically if you have long arms and long limbs these are really good for combat sports another one is um roy jones roy jones jr the third super long arms everybody knows him for having that super crazy long reach those left hooks right and then the second type is the short limbs long torso so those are people like i don't know if you remember back in the day ufc um lightweight champion sean shirk really short arms long torso kind of a shorter guy as well um but the 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 way you need to go about training here is a lot different as a man okay so let's talk about what we got here uh, have we mentioned Nagano? Yeah, Francis Nagano is definitely a large... I would say he's a hybrid between mesomorph and endomorph, but more on the mesomorph side because Francis Nagano is a fucking terrifying man. Francis Nagano is a scary individual. There is just no... there's. It's irrefutable that that African man 
is a fucking nightmare. Um, bro, that guy, if he fights John Jones, John's got to wrestle him. If John doesn't wrestle him, it's over. Uh, he is, he is a thousand percent going to, he's got to wrestle him. He's got to beat him like Stipe Miocic did. You have to fight that guy with a smart fight because if you go in trying to be a gangster, you're going to get taken out on a stretcher. Going back to Body Type 1, this ep- this article is available on T Nation. And if you're finding this episode of value, I have a free course available for you. You can just click on that link right there. Um, modernlifedating.teachable.com forward slash body fitness max. The link's in the chat. Link's in the description box below. 100% free. has a course that gives you the fundamentals on understanding physical fitness, tracking your calories, and also includes meals that can teach you how to make healthy, delicious, simple meals for beginner-level chefs that will help you economically stay in charge of your life because they're all very cheap, they're high in nutrition, and they're low in calories, and they're high in protein. Everything men need, especially if you're an endomorph out there. Okay, endomorphs, you guys got to watch your calories. You got like It sucks because I am a fan of Krispy Kreme, and you can't not binge, man. I could tear through a fucking box of six Krispy Kreme donuts like nobody's business. But the next day, I will wake up and I will look like the Pillsbury Doughboy, okay? So I just got to eat it slow and eat one and and just enjoy it. (laughs) So let's go here. Now, each body each body type has a wonderful advantage and a wonderful disadvantage, unfortunately. So body type one is long limbs, long uh, long limbs, short torso. This is me. Tend to progress more easily on pulling movements than on pressing ones. Yeah. A- actually, every time I do bench press, um, my right wrist and my right elbow hurt. I, di- I didn't tap to an arm bar when I was 24. I'm now 34. Ten years later, it still fucking hurts. Guys, if you're, if you're rolling, man, tap early. Just let go of your ego. It's not worth it. I'll tell you, especially you young guys. Papa MLD is telling you here, okay? Have an easier time getting stronger on the hip hinge deadlift than on the squat. I cannot do when I squat the base, the front of my knees at the base, they feel like they're gonna explode. Where your eight my ACL is, I feel a sharp pain every time I squat. I my legs are just so long. Uh it's funny in Japan. Like, my legs are long and skinny, and girls really like that. So every time I'm with a girl, they're always like, yeah, you know, I love your legs. They're so long and skinny. And, like, it's a compliment, but, I, I, you know, as an American, I take it as an insult. And I always, you know, poke back at them. I'm like, I know. I wish I had, like, big fat legs like you. And they're always like, hey, what are you doing? Don't say that. It's a good way to tease girls. Um, Upper body pressing. Pecs are easiest to develop. can 100% agree. Delts are second. Also getting agree. Dude, my shoulders get big, like, so fucking easy. Triceps are hardest to develop. I cannot tell you how hard it is for me to get my triceps big because I just have, there's so much fucking real estate. There is so much real estate here to fill out. It just takes forever. I mean, I'm pretty strong too. Like, for people who have wrestled with me and they're always like, dude, you are so strong. But... Especially, wow, my arms look so small on this camera. I assure you my arms are not this small. But I have a lot of real estate to fill out here. Okay? So, triceps are hardest to develop. It is what it is, right? Upper body pulling. Um, Lats are easiest to develop. I can agree. My upper back is very easy to build. Rhomboids, rear delts are second. Biceps are third. Upper traps are hardest to develop. Lower body training. So, going back to Ricky... This is why I have a great ass. When you are a long limb person, when you do a lot of squats, people are like, how do you get big legs? Just squat, bro. No, wrong. Depending on the body type, every time I squat, my ass gets huge. I have a fucking nice round tight ass. I get complimented on my ass by girls a lot. And if you have these long uh, limbs, that's probably going to be one of your um, body parts that are easily trained by doing these uh exercises hamstrings are second quads are third and calves are the hardest to develop i have the john jones anderson silva skinny calves man i have done calf raises like when you want to make your calves big you have to abuse the fuck out of these things you have to absolutely 
destroy them. Mad Dog says, four years wrestling. Did you get varsity? I wrestled for two years. I did wrestle varsity. My fastest pin was 34 seconds. Oh, no, 20, 27, 27 seconds. Um, so when you have this body type, again, the, the positive aspects are this. Train your chest. Make sure your chest looks good because when you train your chest and you put on a nice polo or a nice fitted tee, kind of like this right here, when you have like a, 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 like a nice brand name or something cool that's on the chest, when you wear it, it's going to really accentuate your chest. Make sure it's, it's sitting tight on you. And then the delts, obviously, you're going to look good when you're wearing things because your shoulders are going to look nice and round. Okay, that's a good point. Arms, triceps, hey, it is what it is. You just have to put in the volume and you have to make sure that you're doing um, a little bit more effort. Dude, I, I literally, I could train my back and my chest will get bigger, right? But uh, my arms, just forget about it. I have to do some serious, serious concentrated uh, training to get my arms bigger, okay? Um, legs, again, for me personally, I really get a wonderful quad workout when I do lunges. When I do lunges and I have like, you know, I don't, I don't necessarily need to do a lot of uh, work. If I have 20 pounds in each hand and I do lunges um, and I make sure their form is well and I do them slow and controlled, I can really hit them hard if I do like four sets of 12. Personally, I like to set two points in the gym where I walk to and then I walk back doing the lunges, right? Do that four times, um, which is like, you know, turns out to be eight, like one trip there, one trip back. It turns out to be eight little trips and... The next day, my quads are wonderful. And then the seated leg press um, is really good for me. But you have to make sure your knees are positioned well for your knees not to hurt. Because sometimes my knees hurt. Because when you have these long-ass fucking limbs, like, the thing is this. Later down the road in life, guys, for you guys that have long legs like I do, you really have to train your legs now while you're young. So when you're older, you can support yourself. Because people who lose the ability to walk later in life, they die sooner. So you really have to focus on your legs. And especially if you're a long-limbed fucking daddy long legs tarantula like me. Okay. Um, the ass is fantastically and easily developed. I can tell you from experience. So that's not a problem at all. Going to body type two, uh, they say tend to progress more easily on pressing movements than pulling ones. Oh, yeah. going Also, sorry, I want to mention this. Uh, when they mention here a deadlift, dude, I can deadlift like a champion. Um, actually there's a video of John Jones. He's doing like a sumo deadlift. And I think at one point he hits like over 500 pounds on it. Right. Um, but with the situation we have here for the long limbs and short toes, so squat is harder. And honestly, it can be a little bit more dangerous. I tweaked my lower back trying to like ego lift and be like well you know i'm deadlifting fucking 225 but i can't even squat 225 like listen to your body and at the end of the day you have to know that in the gym when you're lifting weights form is everything proper form is more, way more important than how heavy you lift you want to have a healthy balance between the two but if, if i had to choose one i choose perfect form every time okay Keep that in mind. Body type two is short limbs, long torso. Tend to progress more easily in pressing movements than pulling ones. Have an easier time getting stronger on squat than on hinging and dead lifting. Triceps are easiest to develop. Josh uh, from uh, Elif Program is a short limbs, long torso guy. Uh, Josh, triceps are huge. Delts are second, and pecs are hardest to develop. Um, Josh, Peck, Josh looks great because he's a competitive bodybuilder, so he looks great all around, but triceps are exceptionally huge. Um, upper body pulling, upper traps are the easiest to develop. Biceps are second, and rhomboid real de delts are third. Lats are the hardest to develop. Um, quads are easiest to develop for the lower body training. Calves are second, hamstrings are third, and glutes are the hardest. So if you got no ass, it's tough. Now, the good thing about being the short limb guy is you can quickly get the arms that you want, okay? Listen, curls for the girls. That's what we're doing for, right? And when we talk about um, these things here in regards to the Thank you for using Blog Talk Radio. Goodbye. Close that. Uh, post the T Nation link. Here you go. Here's the, here's the uh, T Nation link right there. Okay. 
Uh, the thing when you're when you're a guy with short limbs, you can get really sexy arms really quickly. Um, the ABCs of sexual attraction: abs, bicep, chest. Abs, biceps, chest. ABC. Abs. Number one, most important, quickest way to get a girl wet. Two, biceps. Three, chest. Bonus. G, glutes, right? Um, but the ABCs, focus on your biceps. If you have shorter arms, just make your fucking arms bigger. It's wonderful. Girls will like it. They love, man, girls love, especially if you're on a date and a girl, like, um, holds on to your arm while you're walking. Man, they are they are ecstatic, man. They love touching us. Just like how we, like, when we go on a date with a girl and she has, like, such a tiny hip and she's, like, so, like, skinny and frail – but like we find that sexually attractive because we're men, they find us sexually attractive when we have muscles and nice arms and the body feels tight. You know, they are really big fans of that. So these are all ways you can maximize your training because if you don't understand the type of body you are, and you like, let's just say you're an endomorph, and you're like, yeah, I'm gonna go on a high carb diet. Like, no, that's terrible. You're gonna get fat. You have to be aware of your carbs. And honestly, if you go about training the wrong way you're going to probably encounter some plateau and then think like you're genetically fucked and your life is over and you're just a loser and you're not as alpha and blah, blah, blah. Be educated in what you do. Study the body types. Know what is going on. And that way, you don't have to sit there and like feel like you're a loser. You just know exactly what is going on with your body, what exercise to do, how to optimize your composition, based upon your body site a body type so don't forget guys june 25th body language mastery is coming out go to modernlifedating.com forward slash body language scroll down and then click on this lovely little link right here and this is going to bring you to the waiting list and you just put your email address in here hit that subscribe button and you'll be good to go and don't forget that this wednesday we are having a bonanza of a show special time 11 a.m john McAfee is coming on the Tokyo Crypto Show with me and Charlie from CultivateCrypto.com. We are going to talk about cybersecurity, hacking, cryptocurrency, making money online, which cryptocurrencies are good, which one are busts. You do not want to miss this, especially right now when we're about to enter potentially financially risky times. This man is going to clear up a lot of the questions you have. I know a lot of you guys don't watch the Tokyo Crypto Show. And you guys think that cryptocurrency is not viable. Um, I can assure you, you're wrong. So come on down Wednesday, 11 a.m., May 27th. You're not going to want to miss this. Until then, you guys have a wonderful day. Get out there. Make money. Make muscles. Learn game. Don't be a black pill MGTOW loser. And I'll see you next time.